In this video, I'm going to share with you the best abilities that you can be using in Madden 22 right now with the latest AP update and some of the tweaks we're making offensively and defensively. Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is Cody and we do videos every single day that can help you become a better Madden player. And I've spent all day testing different abilities, cocktails, different things, different pass rushing uh, chemistries, different coverage abilities, different um, offensive line configurations, different route running abilities. And this is kind of what I have figured out. So I wanted to share it with you guys. And this is how I'm running my offense and defense in terms of my AP um, or my ability setup. So if you want to check out my eBooks, I'm going to be talking about my trips tight end offense. I'm going to be talking about my uh, nickel 335 wide defense in this video. These are the abilities that I use and those are the primary formations I'm going to be using offensively trips tight end or New England playbook and defensively we're going to be focusing in on the 335 wide primarily my match quarters defense which I feel like especially with the latest nerf to pass or to escape artists um, and the increase in AP that is required to be able to run that ability um, you're going to find out that what's really interesting is now I feel like defensively we actually have a pretty decent chance of getting at least one or two stops a game, um, especially if our if we're playing someone that's not very good with that escape artist. So let's dive into these abilities. And again, if you want to get my all my ebooks, um, the cool part about my Patreon membership is it gets that gets you access to all of my Madden 22 offensive and defensive ebooks. So if you want to get access to that, there's going to be a link in the description. Now I have been working on a new theme team, so I don't have. Uh, it's not all completely finished. I need a new running back. I need to kind of finish out the offensive line. Um, but by and large, this is a really, really good team. Obviously, I just sold a couple cards here, so I got some coins to finish that up. Um, but I want to walk you through primarily my abilities. I'm running a 50 out of 50 Seattle theme team. And the primary reason why is for the defense, which I'll, co I'll cover in just a second. But offensively, I want to walk you through um, the abilities that I have on my players. So the first thing that I have is my quarterback. Um, and the reason that I'm putting fearless on the quarterback right there is for two primary reasons. Number one, I think that a lot of people are just going to run a couple of, they're going to run five uh, to seven acrobats, and then they might run two edge threads or two under pressures or four under predictables. I feel like what's going to happen is you're going to see a lot of people start to using D line abilities. Now, I personally have tested some of those out, and I can tell you that I've seen a lot of edge thread elite today. Quite honest with you, I don't think it's really that good. Uh, just based on the testing that I've done, it's not really been very consistent for me. It's not been consistent in 245, nickel triple, nickel normal, nickel 335 wide, 335 normal, 34 bare. I mean, I've tried a variety of different formations, and I haven't found a lot of consistency with that ability. For that reason is why I'm going to say that I think that that's going to be an interesting thing to monitor. And the other thing that I want to quickly point out about edge threat is, and the edge threat elite is really what I'm doing with my guards here. And I'm going to show you that uh, real quick. Uh, but what I've got on my guards is I've actually got a post up on both guards. Now, the reason, primary reason for that, two main things. If you play Madden, um, if you don't use post ups, what's going to happen is if they only rush three players, you're typically going to get shedded right down the middle and they're going to have a, a, a split of a double team. And that's pretty much how they're going to get their pressure. Or what's really cool about this ability, too, is like let's say they have edge threat elite or, you know, even if they have edge threat on one player, maybe they have them on both. It doesn't really matter. Typically, what this is going to allow us to do is these post ups, you're going to find a lot of success in terms of your the, the rate at which you get shedded specifically by a coverage defense, which is then going to force the opponent to have to blitz you have to send five to six players at you. And what that's going to do. And that's where we got um, fearless with with uh, with Joe Namath. And the reason why is because now he's not going to get inaccurate throws, even when there's pressure in his face, even if they have the under pressure ability. The other two abilities I have on him is Hot Route Master. I think that's an absolute must if you're running trips tight in because you're going to spend two AP on outside of Prentice and tight end Prentice anyway. So I think it's very much so more valuable just to grab the Hot Route Master. That way you get all the routes. The other reason, uh, and the other ability I want to talk about just real briefly here is Set Feet Lead. Now, again, with the nerf to escape artists, you're not going to be throwing the ball on the run a lot. And if you are throwing the ball on the run, chances are typically you have a chance to roll out of the pocket, set your feet, and make the throw. And so I've actually had a lot of success with set feet lead. I've been using it for the better part of the last probably three, maybe four months. 
um, just kind of was trying to save some cap, save some AP, and was able to do that with set feet lead. So you can use pass lead lead here. If you do that, you might wanna take one of these route running abilities off, but I also have some route running abilities. So the deep out elite ability, I feel like it's a great ability, um, and primarily on your tight end, because he's gonna just, tight ends are already, especially Darren Waller, um, six foot six, six seven, big body type players. They're going to be able to make catches that they wouldn't normally make if they don't have this ability. So corner routes, post routes, um, things like that. I have a lot of success throwing in my tight end on. The next thing that I want to show you is uh, Devin Hester. Now, this is my outside receiver in the trips tight end formation. And I put short out elite on him. Now, what I love about this ability is you'll find that he lights up on almost everything that you do um, as long as they don't have one step ahead out there. If they have one step ahead on there, you'll basically cancel each other out. What I mean by that is that one step ahead um, and short out elite will cancel each other out and be just like a, they didn't have abilities on them whatsoever. So what I like about this short out elite ability is another thing that I really love about it is let's say they press you. If you get pressed with this ability, nine times out of ten you're going to beat that press, get a chance to get a nice catch over the top of the defense. So it's another reason why I really like this ability. And then I'm just running route tech here. You could make an argument to put short and elite on this guy. Um, you could also make an argument to put deep out elite on Allworth and to put deep out elite on Hester um, or to put deep out elite on Allworth and maybe, you know, maybe like a, a deep out elite on your third slot. But I'm going right now with nothing on my outside slot in the trip side information, which is Jerry Rice. I just have double me on him. Uh, but as you can see, that's my abilities. The reason I'm using route tech is just primarily to you know kind of guard against the potential of someone running you know a lot of one step aheads on me i had deep out a lead on him and i faced somebody that ran one step ahead and i still got open consistently but i do feel like that's going to just kind of keep that and i had an extra ap if you want to take what i would honestly do um what you could do is you could take deep out a lead off of waller and put it on to allworth or rice um, you could do that very easily. You could take Fearless off of Namath and use more route running chemistries. To me, this is all you really need um, to be successful in trips tied in on offense. So that's my offensive abilities, not defense. Now, this is going to get interesting. I'm doing something a little bit different, and um, the reason why is because of the style of defense I play. So match coverage is really what I'm primarily utilizing, also using um, situationally, man coverage situationally, zone drops. But if you think about it, um, if you think about match coverage, you also think about an offense in general, where they're going to put their route tech, especially if you're defending bunch or trips uh, type of players, they're typically going to put that route tech in the slot. And so what I've done with my defense here um, is I'm going to show you what I've got here. Uh, I've got all coverage abilities. Everything is for coverage. I did. I was messing with edge start elite, like I said uh, earlier, but I feel like it's just better in my opinion, to not worry about D-line abilities, I really don't feel like they're doing um, as much as consistently as you might think that they are. So I think you just, I was getting really good sheds. The best defense I've played all day is when I put all my resources into coverage abilities and none into pass rush. I still get sheds, I still get pressure. Um, and so that's just my personal opinion. You can take it or leave it. But now let's take a look at this um, this this player here, DK Metcalf. So this guy in the Seahawks team, team is, one of the corners that has 90, all my corners have 99 speed, of course. Um, but he's one of the corners that has a man archetype. It's one of the only corners that has a man archetype. And um, what you're able to do with that is you're able to get one step and deep route KO combined for six AP. So my plan with this defense is to use him in the slot and be able to man him up on uh, the slot because typically that's the number one problem player um, in any formation. It's definitely the one that's going to get the most benefit, in my personal opinion, out of a one step ahead and a deep route KO because the one step is going to keep them close enough to the crossing route or the corner route um, so that they can then activate their deep route KO on the sideline and make um, make catch tackles. And, and I've had a lot of success with this today. Now, the, the next abilities I think are really interesting to talk about. In match coverage, if you put deep zone KOs out there like let's say you put even if you put mid zone KOs to be honest with you which I might I'm gonna actually think about doing some testing with the mid zone KO as well but what I've noticed um with these deep zone KOs is these deep in zone KOs are on my two outside cornerbacks so Richard Sherman and Sean Springs are my outside corners and um, they both have the deep end zone KO ability. Obviously, they're 99 speed. They're zone archetypes. I've got universal coverage. I think universal coverage is the best X-Factor by far. 
Uh, but let's take, let's talk about deep end zone KO for just a second. What you're going to get with this is typically their break on the ball, specifically in match coverage, is going to be better. So they're going to get a little bit a little bit of a speed burst, I guess you could say, to the ball when they're thrown um, when the ball is thrown at them. And if you think about quarters coverage, what are the primary things that beat quarters coverage? Well, the number one thing that they're going to try to do is isolate one of these outside receivers on a route tech and they're gonna to try to throw a deep post. This deep end zone knockout is very good for that because it's gonna basically be similar to deep route KO and man coverage in the sense that if they if they are in the ability to make the play, they will knock the ball out nine times out of ten. And so they're not they're they're gonna get improved reaction time. So they're gonna be already have a little bit of a speed burst toward the ball, and they're also gonna be able to knock out some of those deep post routes that most people like to run from, again, the outside receivers. And now I'm gonna come back to the inside receivers, inside slot type receivers um, with our next ability. But the other thing that I like to do is my two outside linebackers in three five wide, I think this is arguably one of the better um, cheap abilities in the game. Flat zone KO for one AP, they play really good in their purple zones. They're gonna be able to stop slants. They're gonna be able to stop running back routes. They're gonna be able to stop, they're gonna mess with some wheel routes to be quite honest with you. So this is a great ability for underneath type of patterns. And then the last uh, two guys are here are my safeties. Now, the mid zone KO, I've actually thought about taking off. Um, I just had two extra AP, felt like I could put it there. What I might do is go ahead and put Acrobat on my user or try to find a way to save one more AP and just use Derwin James here. Currently, Derwin James is my user because I don't have Cam all the way done yet, but you could easily just find a 98.99 speed guy that you could put there, user him um, with Acrobat. Very, very much so a good uh, option if you want to take the two mid zone KOs off. The reason I leave the mid zone knockouts on is because um, in quarters, the safeties are oftentimes going to be converting to man match on inside type of players so we're talking like slot receivers we're talking tight ends we're talking um you know in the trips the two slots of the trips oftentimes these these guys are playing them and really the biggest thing that they're going to be able to do with the deep out zone knockout ability is it's going to significantly help them defend corner routes and crossing routes to the outside the mid zone knockout ability is more going to help them get a nice improved reaction time and also let's say for example you're facing somebody another common thing that people like to do against match is they'll throw curl routes to the slot receiver this mid zone ko allows you to have a guy in the area that's going to knock the ball out in those situations so you see how the defense is kind of being built from outside in. Now, this also allows us a lot of flexibility in our coverage. So let's say we wanted to run, let's say we wanted to run um, a little bit of like uh, Mike Blitz 3, for example. We could easily do that with these, with these abilities. We could also do some cover 2. Um, we could also run some man coverage. One of the things you could do with this man coverage, because you have the mid zone KO abilities, is you could take those safeties and put them in purples, or you could run the Mike Blitz zero and put your linebackers in purples. Um, there's a lot of value to that. But my bottom line is these are the abilities that I'm liking right now. I will say if you don't like the knockout abilities, that is fine. My personal advice would be to put acrobats and pick artists on everybody. And the reason why is because it's going to help them get animations. We're trying to get turnovers, and we're trying to get our guys to react to stuff they already should be reacting in. So those are my abilities. That's my theme team. All my receivers are 99 speed. Now, my pass rushers here real quick. I don't use, real quick, let me show you this. My pass rushers, I don't use Freeney and and, um, and Clowney. I'm using Elroy Hirsch, Daniel Hunter, and Max Crosby. They just have better ratings, and in my opinion, they're just better players. So that's what I'm doing there. Again, Night Train Lane is a safety. DK is the slot. So, again, I'm going to be manning him up in certain situations uh, that I need to. Otherwise, I could just put him in a, uh, you know, a yellow zone or whatever underneath to help defend underneath. But to me, this is a great ability set up for um, any kind of match coverage, zone coverage. Um, I've tried the one-step and deep route KO. I've tried the one-step short route KOs. I've tried um, edge thread. I've tried unpredictable. I've tried under. I've tried everything you can. Every almost every single ability cocktail that you can think of. And I'm here to tell you that this has been my most successful one. And if I was going to do anything different about this cocktail, I would go ahead and just put acrobats out there and then have that have have uh, acrobats and pick artists like I just said. So 
this is the best AP setup, at least for defense, in my personal opinion. Offense, it is a little bit dependent on what you're wanting to do, but um, this is a great AP up set, setup for uh, trip side in as well. So I want to thank you for watching the video. If you want to learn my trip side in ebook or my 335 wide defense, both of them are in our Patreon membership, just as 18 other offensive and defensive guides are. So if you want to get access to all of our material, we're also got some new ebooks that we're going to be releasing um, over the course of the next week or so that I'm really excited about. Was kind of waiting for this AP update so that I could get you a really up to date defense. We're going to be talking about nickel wide nine. We're going to be talking about dollar. We're going to be talking about dime two through six. So a lot of really good stuff coming in the Patreon. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to sign up for the Patreon, $10 a month unlocks everything over there. There's a link in the description if you want to go check it out.